Hey guys, welcome back. John from Big Dog North here. Tonight we're going to frag up some pink zoos. Uh, nothing fancy. Average night of coral farming here around the shop. Uh, I do most of my fragging at night. Coral polyps are already closed up. I, I know what corals are what. Uh, you know, I, I, I mark stuff for uh, fragging rotation through the course of the month and then uh, as it comes time for something, I locate it that day. Like earlier today, I located this colony, set it aside, uh, knew that I was going to come back tonight and frag it. And this way, the coral is already closed up. You're not grabbing it, shaking it, causing it undue stress or trauma of it having to close up in a hurry before you pull it from the water. I mean, I know some of you guys are saying, well, my coral never closes up at night. But these are zoas, and for the most part, they do. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and get this colony out after we get our water ready. Right here we've got just regular old tank water. We've got our frag plugs and discs just sitting here getting ready, soaking a little bit. Make sure uh, anytime, anytime you use a ceramic plug, it's always good to let them soak for a little bit. It's not because there's anything in them, but they hold a, they hold a lot of air. They're very porous. Uh, and something that we found is that if you don't, uh, the first couple of hours if you don't soak your plugs, what will happen is the little pores in this piece of ceramic here will trap a lot of oxygen and air bubbles and everything and uh, well those little bubbles will come out underneath the glue uh, and underneath your frag and they can cause unwanted algae, uh, potentially loosening the, the, the bond between the, the glue and the frag plug. And I mean I know these things sound extreme but ultimately we're paying a lot of averages so the more preparation, the more care you take the more time you take to prepare your tools and your equipment, the better your overall results are going to be. The less percentage of lost corals or lost frags you're going to have. And at the end of the day, that's what we're all in this for, is to make sure that we make as many of these little guys propagate, grow, last, so that everybody can enjoy this hobby and be part of reef keeping. And we can really keep this, in spite of the fact that, you know, all around the world we're seeing our natural reefs just torn apart, real lacks of legislation to protect them and to manage them and really make them sustainable resources and uh, I think that it's going to come down to the individual uh, aquarist and small aquacultures to make sure that here in the United States we maintain and even around the world that we maintain a healthy uh, aquarium hobby and the ability to have access to some of these corals that may not be available from the wild much longer. So let's go ahead and get our coral out. As I said earlier, the coral that we're going to be propagating tonight is a large zoa, possibly a palithoa. Bright pink, um, got a nice green eye to them. You can see we've let this colony go and grow out pretty good. Uh, but it's always good to thin these out and give them a little bit of room so they can fill in and grow a few more heads. So we're just going to go ahead and well, you know what? Let's take a moment to just kind of make sure. Absolutely. See, there's a great candidate right there. Let's just go ahead and go ahead and take this guy. And you can see there's a, a juvenile right here with him. Let's just go ahead and take these. And I think if I'm good with the snips, there we go. I'm crack loose. And there's our frag. All right, next up, let's see if we can get these little guys down here. Sometimes you have to squeeze this pretty hard at it. Have to turn it so that it doesn't go flying. There we go. Wasn't exactly what we wanted, but okay, sirrah, sirrah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set our colony back into one of our tanks right now. We don't need it for the moment. We're going to have plenty of uh, pallies right here to accomplish our goal for the evening. Uh, so, back to the tank for this guy, and we'll frag this up. Okay, welcome back. Our colony is back in the water, safe and sound, happy and secure. We ended up with two frags here. We've got a little two polyp button, which I was going to try to shave off smaller pieces, and, you know, this would have been ideally the way to go. But, uh, didn't work out. That's fragging. Can't control it. Sometimes the rock splits where the rock splits. But I think what we're going to end up with is probably a single starter, maybe a four colony here, a four colony here. I don't know, maybe just crack this in half and call it two plugs. 
Sometimes that's all you get. But now that that coral's been cut, that's all we'll pull for the month off of it. So we try, want to try to make these polyps go as far as we can. Now again, these won't be up immediately for sale. There we go. Uh, these will actually have probably about two months of growing before we would consider them. This little guy, believe it or not, will get dropped into our rubble bin. Actually, you know what? Scratch that. I'll glue him with that. It'll be a triple. We'll end up with one, two, three, four decent frags, a little bit of rubble to throw back in the tank, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now some of you are saying, hey, wait a second, we skipped a step. We didn't get the water ready. And you're right, we did. I got ahead of myself. I didn't do something I normally do, and that's add a little bit of lugals. It's not too late. You shouldn't panic. It happens. We're just talking about putting a, a slightly larger than normal concentration of uh, lugals iodine solution in here, just to act as a general disinfectant. We've cut the coral. Not terribly bad. We, we do try very hard, as you can see, all of these that we try to cut around so the actual polyp doesn't get cut. You want to cut the rock around the polyp. This is a good example of a good starter right here. You got two solid polyps, one slightly mature, one slightly juvenile. These will go on to make uh, a good start for a colony. They'll probably branch out with one or two polyps fairly soon. Go ahead and work away a little bit more of the rock. Don't hesitate to make it easier for you to glue. The better the job that you do at this point, the better result overall you're going to have with your frags. I like to try to square up the bottoms so that they want to sit upright. Uh, again, this is your opportunity to make sure that this frag, when you glue it, isn't going to rock or roll over or get bumped by a crab when you set it back in. Uh, these things happen. It sounds silly, but they really do happen. Again, I'm just going to take some of these. I'm going to bring my bone snips in, and I'm cutting that crooked foot right off of it so that when I glue it, I'm gluing as little rock as possible and as much flat surface as I can. I want these to sit straight up and down on their own. I don't want them to want to roll over. Uh, and the more, the more that you can do to allow for that, the better off they are. Alright, so let me go ahead and take a second to dry off some frag plugs. Dry the tops a little bit so we can get good glue here. Here's them. Uh, then before we glue them, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of iodine, give it a swirl around, a little more water, just to make sure that these have a chance to thoroughly get disinfected, make sure that their cuts aren't going to be prone to growing any fungus or having any issues. Uh, some people don't use lugals. Some people use much more than just lugals. Uh, I think lugals is generally a 25 to 30 percent increase in survivability of cut frags. Um, it's an absolute must when cutting mushrooms and anemones and uh, we swear by it. Whose brand to use? Well that's up to you. Uh, there's several good manufacturers on the market. Uh, I'd like to tell you you always get what you pay for but research is your best friend. Lack of uh, knowledge is always your worst enemy and it, it is up to you the reefer to research and study and read as much as you can. Don't take my word for it. Form your own opinions, make your own decisions, learn what works for you. Reef tanks are not like belly buttons, they're not all the same. Uh, you know, it's... Everybody's tank is a little different. What works in my tank may not work for your tank. And that's okay, but you have to find what works for your tank. Yeah, there's general rules of thumb, and there's things that you do want to try to obtain, like certain water parameters, but what it takes to reach those parameters vary system for system. Different amounts of rock, different amounts of sand, different types of salt mixes, different amounts of uh, buffering minerals and elements, and oh my god, there's so many things to do, it's just crazy. That's another conversation. In fact, we'll try to get Bob on a video for that as soon as we can. Alright guys, like I said, enough of me yakking. Let's go ahead add just a, a couple of drops of the iodine solution. And you can see just that little bit. We're going to spread out and stir in. And that's really all you need. All we're trying to do is make sure that Nobody's going to get any little funky monkey diseases. No little bacteria 
They're going to want to go scrambling into any tears or cuts. Okay, so here we go, guys. Just going to cheat a little bit. Feel my handy dandy towel. If my wife sees this, I'm probably in trouble because it's one of her good white ones. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to glue the top. Or, ah, dry the top so that I can glue it. Just going to set a couple of these in the rack. I know I've got four four frags that we're going to do with these. Alright, we're not going to stop there. Got more things that I want to frag with you guys tonight. Some of these are new plugs, some of these are old plugs. Uh, if you lose a frag, um, you got to evaluate something. 